Today I present to you a video that took way too long to make. But on the bright side, it's January, which means New Year's resolutions, fresh starts, and an optimistic outlook on the year ahead. But to YouTubers, it means sort of one thing. Really low ad rates, which means I get to make pretty much anything I want without any fear of consequences. So I figured it's been a hot second since I did a drawing video, and I've been seeing Dragon Ball prop up in different styles on Twitter here and there. And that's when I had an idea. What if I drew Goku in nine different styles? Some anime, some not so anime. So I went to Twitter and asked you guys to leave me suggestions for different styles to draw Mr. Sun Wukong in. And leave suggestions you most certainly did. Hundreds, in fact. Way too many for me to draw. So I took the ones that interested me the most, and these are those styles. First up, Dragon Ball. The first style to kick things off will be the classic Dragon Ball style. You know, for comparison's sake, when all is said and done. This is the only style really I had any sort of substantial experience in, to be honest, and I wasn't happy with how it turned out at all. But it's not terrible, and enough of my insecurities. This is pretty much the process I follow. I draw a basic outline for the pose I want, and I start drawing over it until I'm sick of it being in the background, and I ultimately turn it off and eyeball the rest of it from there on in. At this point in the drawing, I'm a little anxious because I know the styles that are coming up, and I know that they're going to be really hard for me. And to be honest, they're really detailed and tough in general. Not to mention the artists that perfected these styles are legit some of my major inspirations when it comes to art. These include Mr. Akira Toriyama, which I am trying and failing to mimic right now. Which doesn't bode well moving forward, seeing as this is the one that I have the most experience in. So how this is going to work is, I'm going to pretty much show you guys the line art process from beginning to end. I'm going to snap my fingers and, as if by magic, the entire piece will be colored. Alright, up to speed. One, two, three, here we go. All right, so you guys might have some questions with the color. Like, why is his hair white? Well, in short, because I thought it looked dope, but it also is a way the Super Saiyan form has been colored using a limited color palette in the manga. Did I take my own liberties with the color? Yes, absolutely. But this is art. There is no wrong, just happy mistakes. Goku's wonky eye is the happiest of all the mistakes. <laughs> anyway, what's next? It's time to do, 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 do. Alrighty, I'm gonna level with you all. Uh, this style, it's my kryptonite. Everything is sharp, but not really, and I honestly struggled with it, like, a whole lot. These eyes, man, they make no sense to me. Then again, no eyes in anime really make sense, but these eyes really didn't make sense to me. But eventually, I got the face done, and to be honest, I was fairly surprised with how well it turned out in the end. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! is the anime with the craziest hair, and about 10 minutes into drawing the hair, I looked at my progress and thought... That's definitely not crazy enough, and decided to scrap the entire thing. You see, in Yu-Gi-Oh, the hair has to hit this perfect balance of impossibly sharp and being sort of electrocuted. And so I went back to the drawing board. I don't know if this worked out or not, but it's definitely a whole lot crazier and definitely looks like he's being electrocuted, so that's a win for me. Finally came the body, and my god, was this difficult. I couldn't find much reference of Yu-Gi-Oh characters shirtless, and my search history reflects the damage of that reality. It's sort of low detail, but also kind of round? I don't know. The head with this one I was happy enough with, but the body gets a yikes for me, Chief. Let's see it in some color. One, two, three. Eh, kinda, eh, let's move on. Words cannot express how excited I was to attempt this art style after I saw one of you guys suggest it on Twitter. I loved Samurai Jack's art style, and I loved the show back in the day when it was on Cartoon Network. It's also unlike anything I've ever attempted to draw with its minimalistic approach and weird shape-focused style. You'd think this one would be easier than drawing a regular Dragon Ball art style, and maybe it is for some people, but getting the face right took ages for me. Because there are very few components that make up the features of this character, if one thing is out of place, it has a massive knock-on effect on the overall drawing. It's for this very reason I find drawing detailed characters not necessarily easier, but more forgiving when it comes to the final product's reveal. And this most definitely is minimalistic. Figuring out the hair was probably the most difficult aspect of this one. Everything is very flat and I can't really give anything depth, at least not in the way that I would normally with hair. Eventually, I settled on a hairstyle I thought worked. The body was a bit of a challenge too, but overall, this was a very fun style to attempt. And so, with it fully drawn and to near perfection, it's time to see what it looks like with some color. One, two, three. This actually turned out way better than I thought it would, and it's one of my favorites from this video. But not my absolute favorite. Next up. This one was honestly an absolute pain to draw. And it's probably the one I spent the most time on. 
Reason being, it took two separate drawing sessions to get the face to a standard I was happy with. The body was relatively easy, but the hair and the face was tough as all hell for me. To get the first draft of the face, it took me a little while, but when I finished it, I really wasn't satisfied with it. So I took a break for like two days and attempted it once again. This time with an idea, to make him more like All Might and Lemillion. This sort of worked. I'm still not 100% happy with it, but at least it's better than it was once before. The body had its own little hiccups here and there, but sincerely, finding a face with this that worked for me was a difficult endeavor, and finding a hairstyle that worked for these guys is also proving to be super hard too. But again, this one was moderately satisfying to me when all was said and done. Time for some color. One, two, three. Yeah, that looks a little better. Six out of ten. Moving on. Oh, f I can't believe you've done this. Okay, so we're at the halfway point, and what better way to mark this than with one of the most talented artists in the world? Yusuke Murata, the artist behind One Punch Man manga, one of the most gorgeous and stunning mangas in circulation right now, Yusuke, much like Akira Toriyama, is one of my major influences when it comes to art, and my god, is he hard to replicate. Everything about this style is specific and measured. Sharp, jagged lines, giving the impression of being messy, but everything serves a purpose. This was probably the most difficult overall drawing I attempted with this challenge. The sheer volume of lines, features, and proportions I had to tweak and alter throughout is something I won't be soon repeating. However, one aspect of drawing this that made it much, much easier was that Mr. Murata, it seems, is a massive fan of Dragon Ball, and has posted his own fan art of Dragon Ball online on a number of occasions. And so, for the first time in this challenge, I had very specific reference material at my disposal, which definitely helped. The hair, the face, and the body, it all had tons and tons of detail, and I was exhausted by the time I finished up with this one. But once I finished it, I was actually pretty happy with how it turned out. Time for some color. One, two, three. This might be my favorite one so far. Love me some One Punch Man. Next. Studio Ghibli, as well as the next two styles, are an absolute nightmare for me. Enjoy! For whatever reason, they took me a super long time and it was my very first time drawing these styles. The absolute perfect storm for the worst drawing experience. Ghibli is first up here on the chopping block. I adore these films, I've seen them all a number of times, and for reference I decided to use Ashitaka from Princess Mononoke. This is one of those styles, much like the Samurai Jack one, that implements a somewhat minimalistic, less is more style, and as a result I struggled with this. But in the end, I actually think it turned out pretty well. Additionally, this is a style that is much closer to real world proportions than something like Dragon Ball is. So the head is a little closer to regular size, and the body isn't nearly as swole as the original was. But what I'm most proud of with this drawing isn't the face or the body, which both took a considerable amount of time, mind you, but the hair. I drew the heck out of this hair, and it took a long time too. And I'm genuinely really happy with the end result here. However, once I finished, I quickly realized that he was too jacked. So while I was coloring, I decided to make him less swole, which hurt me a little because it took a little time to do all that kind of stuff, but it made it look much more like a Studio Ghibli creation. Check it out. One, two, three. All in all, I think it looks pretty good and I'm happy with it. Next. The time has come. Disney. The company that has it all. The company that sort of owns the distribution rights to Dragon Ball in North America now, which is really weird to think about. Anyways, this was another one of those drawings that I hated my life during its entire creation. The fewer the lines in these drawings, the more difficult I find things apparently. And Disney is one of those styles that you need to have actual talent or skill in order to make work. But I'm willing to prove all the haters wrong by taking an eternity to get the face right. This drawing was cursed from the very beginning, though the hair in particular I struggled with. I don't even know if I like it to this day. The body is another thing I had to pop reference for, as I had no idea how Disney actually drew their bodies, and apparently every movie has its own unique style. So let's see if any of you guys can guess which movie I actually popped reference for when drawing this Disney Goku. Here's a hint, I use a different style for the hair, the face, and the body. I'll be reading the comments to see if any of you guys can guess correctly all three. And now, time for a splash of color to put this Disney Goku to bed. One, two, three. Eh, it's fine. Next!
never attempted or thought to draw anything from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. To be honest, it looked like a ton of work that I wasn't willing to put into drawing, but it was by far the most requested style for me to attempt, and so... Here we go. In truth, this was the most enjoyable experience I had drawing throughout this entire video. The style actually suits my own shockingly well, specifically with the face. From the eyes, to the nose, to the mouth, to the hair, everything has a boxy, detailed approach that I genuinely had a ton of fun drawing. And it turned out pretty well too if I say so myself. The hair, the face, and the body. Man. When I was drawing this dude, I kept trying to find ways to make him even more jacked than he already was. I mean, he makes the Dragon Ball style Goku look tiny. One thing I regretted though while drawing this dude was that he didn't have any clothes to draw him in. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is sort of about the weird clothes and poses, but it's not like it matters that much. This one was so much fun to draw and it most definitely will not be my last time drawing Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. And now, time for a splash of color. One, two, three, not bad. Time for the last draw. This was my favorite show before Dragon Ball and it's only fitting it rounds off this video. And personally, I think it actually turned out pretty well considering it's one of the only other drawing styles I had any experience with. With the actual character itself, I didn't know if I wanted to go more Lance the Dragon Trainer with the face or Bruno with the face. And ultimately, I thought Bruno suited the character more. Lance is more of a Vegeta type demeanor, isn't he? At least in terms of style. The hair was the only real challenge, but I sort of went for a Lieutenant Surge meets Jolteon type spike situation. The body itself was super easy, not too detailed, but the lines were still there in order to help structure the pose. And so, let's add some color. One, two, three. And that's Goku, drawn in nine different styles by me. Totally not Mark. This was way, way harder and much more time consuming than I ever thought it would be. I mean, it's January, I'm supposed to be taking it easy, and this video took four times longer to make than any of my other ones. Eh, whatever. If you want to see any of the drawings to compare, I will be posting them all on my Twitter, at TotallyNotMark. Follow me if you want to see my tweets, I don't know. I also put polls up there, so who knows, you might be able to influence a video I do in the future. But, that'll do it for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.